top left is a northern tamandala climbing a tree, bottom left are a trail of leafcutter ants and bottom right was a lizard. This is my second ever wildlife watching vlog. This is about my trip to the Osa Peninsula in Costa Rica, in particular the Dos Brazos area. You're going to see the maps, kind of things coming out of the maps including other maps and that will help you see where everything is. I'm staying at Dos Brazos. I'm staying here for three weeks. This is an early experiment at making a wildlife watching vlog. And in this case, I I took a lot of video footage. It was just like, it was kind of my thing while I was there. I was like, ooh, I wonder. And I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And I thought I was just doing it for me. So this is actually very, very unusual. D don't, don't get used to this. There's like 15 minutes of video in this one. What, what you can actually expect in the future, this is a Scarlet McCall by the way, what you can expect in the future, if you're interested, is shorter videos, but I've got a new video camera since, so it's like 4K, I think the colours are much richer with the new camera, and I've it's got a better zoom, So, but this one we're looking at just like quantity, and still I think quite a lot of quality, anyway, experimental, oh I'm going to be quiet, listen to this. Black mandible toucan calling. Okay, so I'm now at Belita. I spent a long time at Belita and I shared the hostel with a number of people and also shared it with these bats, which would sometimes hang there arguing. Belita, I think it's a fantastic hostel to go to if you don't mind really roughing it and you're on a budget. This is a laughing falcon. This is a Rufus Nightjar which I spotted. There are... Um, if you come to Costa Rica between kind of ooh, October and February, you've got some good chances of seeing birds that are migrants that are staying there for the winter. This is a male charming hummingbird. You're going to see these all the time, whatever time of year you visit. Oh, there he goes. And I'll be quiet. Here is a howler monkey. about to see a long-billed hermit, which is a type of hummingbird. Frankly, I rarely manage to follow a hummingbird, but I'll occasionally luck out, kind of once every ten years, <laughs> if, it's, if it happens to be moving through some flowers and I can predict where it's going to be and I stand in a good spot so it reasonably stays in focus. Um, yeah, wow. And here it is perched afterwards. I've heard some crazy statistics about how they have to feed every kind of two minutes and stuff like that, and I'm like, hmm, I think that must be a bit of an old wives' tale, because sometimes they sit around for ages. Um, if you're at Belita, I saw those particular animals, as you will have seen if you're sort of watching where they popped out of the map, on a walk to the waterfall, and here's a quick picture of the waterfall. I carried on after the waterfall, did a bit more exploring, and then hid as these armed gold miners, which shouldn't really be there, went past going up the river. Probably they would have been friendly, but who knows, I decided to stay hidden. On the way back I saw this, on, from that particular walk, I saw this female purple crowned fairy, yet another creative name for a butterfly. Do I mean butterfly? I mean a hummingbird. <laughs> oh look at this. I. Is it just me, or is that an amazing pattern that the... Um, it looks to me like an amazing pattern that some insect has created there. On one misty day, I got this photograph with a uh, dragonfly in it.
It was a very produ oh, I'll be quiet. This is a female black-throated trogon. So like I said, this is a very, very unusual wildlife watching vlog. I'm not sure any of the others are going to be like this. I spent a prolonged time here, in particular at Belita. Oh, uh, this particular walk I'm going up to Gatago, which was my favourite walk. I saw a lot up here, and I'm going to sort of tell the story here of the day when I saw lots of mammals. I just saw them all on the same day. It was really strange. It, it kicked off with what I thought was going to be the highlight, which was this camouflage lizard. Look at it. it. Its head, to me, looks like some lichen. And then its body looks a bit like a kind of bit of broken off bit of branch or something. And I was seeing typical wildlife, such as this red cat mannequin. But then I just really lucked out on the mammal front, and I saw... First of all, I saw this sloth in a tree. And I've got a video clip of it slowly moving its head. All these video clips are a little bit dark and lacking colour, partly because of the camera I've got, but mainly because this is a very low light area. If you're in rainforest or forest like this, you've got quite a thick kind of layer of layers of trees. Oh look at this, this is a northern Tamadala. I reckon it must be finding somewhere to rest for the day having sort of been hunting at night and early morning. Yeah, so in general, a lot of these videos are in the, in the dark understory of the forest, which is why they lack a little bit of colour and can be a little bit grainy. Oh, this is a cat track. Right, this must be a wild cat. No claws visible. Doesn't resemble anything else that it could be. I'm confident. My guess is it might be an ocelot based on its size, but not 100% sure. Although I did after that, I didn't get a picture of it, but I saw a jaguar. Wow, it was amazing. Oh, this is a, a dead spider. Ants will find anything and just start picking it apart for food once I got back to the hostel. This is a spot crown euphonia. In a moment we're going to see a lizard, and then we're going to see some howler monkeys, and some kind of blob, simple blob life form that I saw all around the hostel just during the day. Frank, you could just sit at the hostel, and that was enough to see absolutely loads of stuff. I think Belita is a fantastic place to go. Anyway, oh yeah, so the uh, Jaguar story. I was walking on the path, stopped, sat on a log, I was at a junction, looking around, and then I saw this Jaguar appear on the path. It was walking towards me, and I was like, oh my goodness. It's, it's going to run in a minute when it sees me, and it didn't see me, and it didn't see me, and it didn't see me. Got within, oh, 10 metres? And that, th a, a jaguar can jump. I was pretty scared, and I normally took a machete with me, which I'm not sure how much good it would do against a jaguar, but it might help. I didn't have it with me. If I'd been next to, I was already psyched, if I'd been next to a cliff, I looked, because often you're next to a cliff. There were no cliffs nearby, so I could have just leapt off the cliff. I, I reckon my chances of surviving that are much higher than surviving being attacked by a jaguar. But I think I was lucky because I might, yeah, I must have surprised it enough that it just ran off fuel. Um, yeah, so one day I went to Dos, into Dos Brazos. Well, a number of days I did, but this tells the story of a typical day when I went to Dos Brazos. Um, sometimes I had to go and get some more food. So there would often be basilisk, lizard, lizard, basilisk lizards by the river as I crossed to go back in, into the town. This was a particularly easy to video leaf cutter ant colony because it was by the road which meant it was lighter, wasn't so dark so I could get a better picture. Here's a green iguana that I saw in a tree in town. This is not going to be news if you're used to sort of wildlife watching or just living in the Americas you often get iguanas in trees it's a thing but I was excited to see it this is a black striped wood creeper
and so sort of the far end of my walk through the town I saw this spotted sandpiper by the river. If you're interested to know behind the scenes, this is one of the first, this is my second video that I'm making and I'm currently holding a pillow above my head to try and um, prevent reverb <laughs> and make the sound better. It's pretty mad. Okay, uh, I, uh, another day I went on a walk along the, what I've called the footpath to Puerto Jimenez and Karate, which is actually used as a footpath by some people. It's a long way, sort of tens of kilometres, but why not go that way if you've got the time and it saves money? We just saw a lineated woodpecker first, and this is a pale-billed woodpecker. Going back to the theme that I was talking about in my previous video about backpacking in Costa Rica, where I loved some of the woodpeckers I was seeing. This is a male violaceous trogon, which was on the cover of my first ever wildlife watching book that I published. And this is typical feeding behaviour for a vi any trogon sitting on a perch and notice how it's just slowly swinging its head from side to side. Possibly we actually didn't see much of that behaviour there but anyway th that's what they typically do. Uh, this is, oh, let's just, we might as well keep doing uh, animal names because I usually do it. This is either a Rufus Mourner or a Rufus Peer. I don't really know which. I think if you're really used to bird watching in this area you might be able, you could probably tell straight away but they're very similar if you look up in the field guide they sort of say good luck they're really difficult to tell apart. Back at Bolita let's just spend another image. I'll put together some more clips to make another imaginary day. Here's the view near the hostel. I go for a walk and I oh look at that it's a, it's a female violet crowned wood nymph which is another species of hummingbird. And I would often disappear in the evening as it was coming towards dusk and look for mammals. Just sort of sit somewhere just to the north of the hostel, a few hundred metres. And on one such day I saw a group of female coati feeding and slowly moving along the forest floor. I know they're females because the males will, live, will not go in groups and will be on their own. Unless of course they're a young male in which case they might be in a group because they'll be with the females still. In case you haven't spotted it, here's a snake moving through the undergrowth. Notice suddenly the image quality of this video is much better. It's because I'm looking above the tops of the trees into the sun-covered area. This is a black vulture preening. It is a good video camera I've got, it's just lit. and in fact it's only because it's such a good video camera that I was able to take all the footage I did in deep in the forest. For example, check out this buff-throated foliage gleaner. Whenever I've shown my friends this, they always laugh. This is a scaly-throated leaf tosser. So the name of this bird is scaly-throated leaf tosser. And it is definitely tossing leaves. This is a male black-throated trogon. Much clearer example here, I think, of how it slowly moves its head from side to side, angling it. If it sees an insect flying, it will often fly off, catch the insect, or try to catch the insect, and then return to the perch, either on the same perch or nearby often. And this is a puff bird which will similarly do do very similar thing, much like fly catches. A lot of birds do this. And we'll finish off this video in a moment with a squirrel eating. If, if, if I saw stuff falling out of a tree, it was usually a squirrel eating or a toucan or a monkey and in this case it was a squirrel thanks for watching 
do check out the link in the description to my blog where there's loads more information and there is an upsell to a book there but you don't have to buy the book. Thanks for watching.